Welcome to Universal Recap. Today, I'm going to recap an American dystopian science fiction film from 2014 named, The Maze Runner. Thomas finds himself waking up in an elevator that's moving upwards, and there are supply containers marked WCKD with him. As the elevator reaches the top, a door opens above him, and he's surrounded by a group of young men slash boys. Thomas tries to run, but he realizes that he's in a small glade with huge walls surrounding it, leaving him with nowhere to go. Galley, a member of the group, stops Thomas from trying to run into the maze accessible through a door in the wall. Albie, the leader, and Newt, his right-hand man, explain to Thomas that the box comes to the surface once a month with supplies and a new boy. They all live in the glade and call themselves gladers. None of them remember anything at first, but their names come back to them after a few days. Each boy has a different job, such as building or running. A door in the giant wall opens every day and closes every night, leading to the maze that surrounds the glade. Runners go through the maze looking for a way out, but if they get trapped overnight, the grievers will get them, and they'll die. The maze changes every night, and Albie was the first boy to arrive in the glade. None of them know why they're there. Thomas forms a friendship with Chuck, one of the youngest members who arrived in the glade a month before him. That night, they celebrate Thomas's arrival. Galley is wrestling with one of the other boys and asks if Thomas wants to join in. They end up sparring, and Thomas hits his head on the ground, which triggers his memory of his name. I remember my name! I'm Thomas! Come on! That night, Thomas has a dream filled with fleeting images, and a woman says, Wicked is good. Albie takes Thomas on a tour to show him around. The gladers mark their names on the wall when they arrive and cross them off when they die. To fit in, Thomas is assigned the task of digging up fertilizer from the woods. However, he is attacked by Ben, a runner who was stung by a griever. While fighting, Ben accuses Thomas of being responsible for their situation and tells him that he saw him. Ben is going through the changing, a condition that causes extreme pain and aggression, and for which there is no known cure. As a result, they force Ben into the maze at night when the doors are closing. The gladers are worried about a possible griever attack during the day. That night, Thomas has another dream. The woman in his dream tells him that Wicked is good, and he also remembers working alongside a girl his age, going over diagnostics. The next day, Albie enters the maze to trace Ben's steps and find out what happened to him. It rains during the day, and Albie still hasn't returned by nightfall. All the boys gather around the entrance to the maze. Just as the doors are about to close, the lead runner, Minnow, emerges with an injured Albie. Thomas rushes in to help, but the door closes behind him. Albie was stung while inside the maze, and one of the grievers appears and chases after Thomas. The grievers are giant bedbugs with robotic legs and scorpion tails. Thomas and the griever run around as the walls of the maze change, but he manages to lure the griever between two walls that collide, killing it. The next day, Galley calls a meeting of the gladers. Most are excited that Thomas killed a griever, but Galley and his followers believe that Thomas has disrupted the rules that were in place to keep everyone safe, causing changes such as griever's attacks during the day. However, their discussion is cut short by the arrival of the elevator. The boys rush to see what it brought. Inside, they find a girl and no supplies. She looks up and calls out Thomas before passing out. In her hand, she clutches a note that reads she's the last one ever. Galley demands punishment for Thomas since non-runners are not allowed in the maze. He is afraid that the girl's knowledge of Thomas will cause trouble. Newt suggests that Thomas be locked up without food overnight and become a runner starting the next day. Galley is not pleased with the leniency shown to Thomas. Some boys go back into the maze to inspect the dead griever's carcass, which angers Galley further. They find a device inside it that is marked with WCKD and reads the number 7. They realize that whoever is sending them supplies also created the grievers. Minnow shows Thomas a map of the maze, which has different sections that open every day as the maze changes. They notice that section 7 was open last night. The girl wakes up and starts throwing things at the boys from the top of a tower. Thomas identifies himself, and she agrees to let him come up. He informs her that her memory was erased, but she'll remember her name in a few days. She reveals that her name is Teresa and she remembers Thomas too. He tells her about the dreams he's had about her and a lady saying wicked is good. Teresa also found two syringes in her pocket when she woke up. Thomas deals with his punishment of being locked up while Chuck visits him and brings him food. Chuck also requests that Thomas deliver a small carved statue to his parents. Even though he doesn't remember his own parents, he is confident that they remember and miss him. Thomas returns the statue to Chuck and assures him that he'll be able to deliver it himself someday. 
The following day, Thomas and Minnow enter the maze with the device they found inside the griever. It starts making clicking noises and guides them to a new section that Minnow has never seen before. They also notice that all of the outer sections of the maze are open. They arrive at the WCKD loading dock, which turns red to green and opens a new path that leads to a sewer tunnel with the same slime as the griever's secretions. They decide to return to the glade. Thomas decides to use one of the syringes on Alby, who is still going through the change. The injection proves to be effective and Alby recovers. However, before Alby can explain what he means by you are their favorite, doors throughout the maze start to open, and countless grievers begin to emerge. Everybody hide! A massive attack by the grievers ensues, destroying a significant portion of the glader's settlement and claiming the lives of many of the boys, including Alby. Chuck is spared after a griever grabs him, but he manages to cut off its tail. In the aftermath, Thomas realizes that the venom of the griever stings helps victims to recall their memories. He stings himself with the tail and recovers some of his lost memories. Thomas discovers that the maze is not a prison but a test and that all of the boys, including himself, are in incubation tubes. He sees himself as a scientist, along with Teresa, and many of the other boys in a state of panic. Using the second syringe, Thomas and Teresa manage to cure themselves and admit to everyone that they are responsible for their imprisonment. Galley and his supporters react violently, tying up Thomas and Teresa outside the maze entrance as a sacrifice. Thomas, with half of the group still on his side, refuses to give up and decides to lead a group into the maze to escape. They encounter the loading dock area again and are attacked by grievers. Afterward, they go through a tunnel that leads to a locked door, and Teresa needs to input a numerical code to open it. They realize the code is the sequence in which the maze typically opens and enters through the door, which crushes all the grievers behind them. The group of kids walk through a series of hallways until they come across a door labeled exit, which turns out to be a normal door found in any regular building. After going through the door, they find themselves inside the laboratory from Thomas' dreams and memories. Unfortunately, all of the scientists there are dead. As they begin to explore the lab, a video starts to play. In the video, a woman named Ava Page identifies herself and explains that the reason the kids don't remember the lab is because of a global disaster known as the Flare. She also reveals that she was part of a controversial group called the World Catastrophe Killzone Department WCKD, which believed that testing the children could lead to finding a cure for the Flare. While Page speaks, guerrilla soldiers suddenly rush in and begin killing other scientists in the background. She tells the kids that she's glad they passed the first test and reminds them that WCKD is good. Before signing off, Paige shoots herself in the head. After the video ends, a door opens that leads outside. However, before anyone can leave, Galley appears with a gun and declares that they all belong in the glade. He attempts to shoot Thomas, but Chuck jumps in front of the bullet and dies. In the chaos that follows, Galley is stabbed in the chest with a knife. Chuck hands Thomas a bloody statue and dies, leaving the remaining kids to continue their journey. A group that looks like the gorillas from the video arrive and takes the kids outside to waiting helicopters. The landscape outside looks like a desert at first, but as they fly over it, the kids soon realize that they're outside what used to be a city. The buildings are destroyed, and everything is covered in sand. They fly over the maze and the glade, but no one questions why the helicopters didn't land inside the glade to rescue the kids there. After the helicopter ride, Ava Page is revealed to still be alive and wiping fake blood off her head. She remarks that the kids have taken the bait, and more of them survived than she had anticipated. She confirms that the maze was a success for WCKD's plans. Thanks for watching. Make sure to subscribe and leave a comment and let us know which film you want us to explore next. Take care.